Uh, and actually, the, the, the new story we're going to talk about today, which is going to inevitably get this video demonetized, and therefore no one on YouTube is going to be able to see it. But if you're listening, great. Well done. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast, probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? Hello, on? Chris. How are you doing? I have started my journey. To That's all you're journey getting. to what? Started my journey, journey to uh, to uh, being the proud owner of a Toyota Century. Um, I have um, <laughs> no. He's I finally have done it. Finally pulled the trigger. Um, a guy called Ken um, has secured me a Toyota Century from Oita, uh, and I will be swapping it for my uh, car that I've got now. Um, so I'm proud to say I'm going to be um, leading you all by the hands <laughs> and the neck. <laughs> Through my journey of importing no. a JDM Japanese car. Uh, Is it installing it. Uh, no, no, it's, it's cheaper, way cheaper oh. than the car I've got now. So um, wow. it, it will be a downgrade, if nothing else. But uh, yes, I am. I have secured a 121 kilometre, 1,000 uh, kilometre um, Toyota Century. Uh, and let's see what happens. Let's see what state it's in when it gets to these. Because <laughs> I've had no one look over it. Every last thing, that, every last bit of advice they give you. Get someone in Japan to check it over for you. Um, make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. I've done none of that. None of that. I just went, give me oh it. Oh, my God, I'm, Give me it. I'm so impatient. Just give me it. Um, and I'll figure out the repercussions. So no doubt uh, it'll be um, split up for junk uh, on eBay oh. um, <laughs> later this year. But um, it's going to take a long time. It takes like a good old like three months to import a car from start to finish. It's a, it's a long So is it going to be literally like rolled onto a boat, Yokohama docks, off again, shipped yeah. around the planet, and yeah. then it'll be in your car park, in your house yep, one day. certainly will. Wow. certainly will. It's exciting. Shame, I can't just bring it back with me at Christmas or something. <laughs> I know, in my yeah, suitcase. Home. Oh, yeah. Well, I just thought, look, why are you in a point in your life where um, the I don't have kids, so I can do stupid stuff. Let's figure out if we can get this done. Let's see, figure logic. out if we can get this done, and then and then we can change the car at the last minute. Um, and but it will save me. To, it will gain me some money by default. I will sell a car I've got. Um, this will be cheaper. So anyone watching, like my partner, <laughs> is going to say, "Peter, you've done it again." I'll say, "Look, I'm good. I'm saving money. So don't worry about it, everybody." <laughs> I feel it's change. going to obliterate the. Uh, it's going to go through so much fuel. That, that is not an economical car. No, it's and not. So it's any V12. money you save is nightmarish. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a yeah. hell. All right, fine. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's not the most <laughs> economical car I could have gone for. But I want, look, there was one, there was one for sale, for twenty grand in uh, down in um, sort of Romford, I think, in Essex. And I went, oh, that looks, oh, the dog's so cool. It's got the chair. We put the foot of the chair. And the Yakuza have got them. Um, and then I thought, <laughs> you know what? Why am I? Why don't I just pay? a much less amount of money to import it myself and then I'll keep it for a couple of months sell it on jobs are good because they were making the big deal like their 20k cars like this is the only Toyota Century for sale in the UK and I'm like I'm going to import it there's going to be two alright and then you're going to put your price down <laughs> play nice alright <laughs> or don't play at all I'm taking your toys away from you so uh, bad, yeah, more on that as I get it uh, Ken's gone very quiet since I gave him the po deposit but uh, he, he might come up trumps you never know <laughs> Well, I look forward to seeing the inevitable mm. photos of you riding yes. around in your outdated taxi tra cab. <laughs> I, I was in a taxi the other day. I was in a rush, got in a taxi, and the driver was really... I've had two really nice drivers. The first one, mm. I had to get a taxi, and it ended up being 40 minutes, and it was endless. But he spoke... He was just a really nice guy. He claimed to know everyone in Japan. We talked mm. about like celebrities and famous people and Yakuza and he was like oh yeah I know all the Yakuza oh yeah I know all the celebrities <laughs> I don't know if he was lying or he's the world the world's greatest most best connected cab driver uh, and actually the, the the new story we're going to talk about today which is going to inevitably get this video demonetized mm. and therefore no one on YouTube is going to be able to see it but if you're listening great well done uh it's going to be, yeah, it's it's a story involving a, a talent agency and a, a horrible predator at the top of mm. it all. Um, but this guy he claimed to sort of know the ins and outs of it and the people involved. And I was like, you, 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 what is this? Like, how do you know everyone? And he was very tight-lipped on it all. Very tight-lipped. Yeah. But the other driver just went the wrong way down the road and refused to take my money after the trip. He, he drove the wrong way. I did five minutes onto my journey and he was like, money, don't pay me money. But I still gave him 
nearly all the pound. cab fare anyway because <laughs> I felt bad for him. It wasn't his fault. Well, it was his fault, but I'm just nice. So that's, that, get... that's not a bad um, thing to know, actually, when you're um, getting a taxi in uh, a Japanese city. Um, I had this in Osaka. Um, learning the sort of language around um, toll roads. We spoke, we started the show last week, toll, mm. road, toll roads. And we started this one as well. You love um, a toll road. When, I love a toll road. Um, Pete Dawson's toll ta- roads. The new the series coming to YouTube. Toll roads. Um, when the taxi driver asks you, is it okay to go on a toll road? Is it okay to go for a pay road? You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. obviously they add that money onto your uh, onto your onto, onto your fare. Um, so it's probably worth sort of if the taxi driver suddenly goes, "Oh, we're going on this road," and he starts talking to you, he's probably talking about a toll road or an impending um, controlled slide. I don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very true. Yeah, I I want to see a, a show where Pete Donaldson travels the world, going, "This is my favourite toll road. I like yes. this road." Yeah, I want to see that, Pete. The Donaldson Toll Road Experience, two thousand twenty-three. Mm. <laughs> well, we got a story this week from James, and I don't think it's about toll roads, thankfully. Uh, no. no, it's no. Yeah. Hopefully not. Maybe it is. I haven't read Maybe it yet. It I can tank Chris, Chris and Placid Pete. In 2017, my dad and I travelled across Japan for three weeks with just our backpacks. We were staying in Fujinomiya and decided to hike to a well-known beauty spot, Lake Tanuki, which I've never oh. heard of. Uh, we walked through beautiful small hold farms, peaceful hidden cemeteries, and had an interaction with a local farmer obsessed with American motorcycles. As we climbed the hill towards Lake Tanuki, a thick, a thick fog rolled in. Ooh. By the time we reached the lake, visibility uh, had been reduced to a few metres. We could see absolutely nothing of the famous view of Mount Fuji. But we decided to still rent bicycles and cycle around the lake and have some sorba noodles from the little restaurant there. And when it came to our return journey, we had intended to take a bus, but we quickly learned it had not been operating for several weeks. It was a very quiet road, but we decided to give hitchhiking a go. As we sat by the side of the road, I read, if you hitchhike in Japan, you will probably be the first hitchhikers they've ever seen. Bugger, I thought. We're going to be here forever. The very first car to drive by, uh, Hide and his family stopped. I love the way he didn't really introduce Hide. He just sort of said, Hide. Yeah, you know Hide. (laughs) Hide Hide Kojima was there in his car. Uh, He stopped. Hide saw two lost white men, clearly out of their depth. And as he later told us, thought, aha, two Englishmen. Hide had studied in, <laughs> in the UK. It was on a short trip with his family. They gave us a lift all the way to our hotel and he relished the opportunity to practice his English and told us he was going to be in Kyoto in a few days running a fashion show. Kyoto also oh. being our next stop. Three days later, my dad and Hide were rip-roaring drunk in a tiny six-seater bar in Kyoto. I left to go find a toilet and returned to hear, ha, hoo, he, ha, ha. The owner had wheeled out a karaoke machine <laughs> and the two of them were drunkenly singing along to Michael Jackson without either of them knowing a single word of the song. Bloody hell, it sounds like <laughs> hell on earth. I hate him <laughs> when to do that. A truly bizarre and wonderfully memorable experience. All the best, guys, James. And the, the wonderful tale of Hide. Yeah, uh, a man who roams the mountains of rural Japan, picking up random white guys and <laughs> take them to Kyoto for fashion shows. In, in my head, in my head, because I think he has a similar name. Uh, I think it's Hide in the office. Uh, one of the workers who plays, who works in the uh, in in the um, what do you call it? The factory, the factory downstairs uh, in the office, US. And Hide is a is a special heart surgeon. Steady hand. Um, it's very memorable. <laughs> so I'm imagining he did from, uh, from the office. Um, but uh, I very much enjoy um, the mention of like the farmers absolutely loving Harley Davidsons because like there's something about <laughs> Japanese men of a certain age, and maybe it is just because of a certain age. It doesn't matter whether they are 70 or 80 or 50, they all love 80s stuff. <laughs> they all love like, yes. stuff yeah, that was yeah, big. Do. Baywatch, guitars, Eddie Van Halen. Kiss, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, motorcycles. They all love stuff that was big in America when it all kind of opened up in mm. the late seventies and eighties. It's fascinating how obsessed. I don't know why that is. I think I, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but like, I remember when I did the Kyoto bar back in March. Mm. We ran the Kyoto bar. The owner of that, really nice guy, who I don't think appeared in the show at all in the video. Yeah. Um, he was like, "Oh, I love like Miami Vice, Daisuke." I was like, "Oh, Miami Vice. Wow, that's cool." And he was like, oh, Crockett and all, all this stuff. And I was like, wow. <laughs> to be fair, I haven't seen Miami Vice. I think it'd be right up my street because I love the <laughs> video game Vice City. I love all the 80s music. I think yeah. I probably should watch it. Um, but he wouldn't shut up about Miami Vice. He loved it. He loved it. Mm. And I, I relished hearing why he loved it so much. 
<laughs> despite not being able to speak English. So I don't know no. what is it, his viewing experience in Miami Vice must have looked like, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they hate it. They love it here. They love it here. Yeah. Maybe that's why I like it in Japan so much. Um, but speaking of the 80s, back in the 80s, <laughs> segue to a new story, yeah. there was a big talent agency uh, at its height and its power. sound like he did from, from the office. <laughs> big talent agency. <laughs> <laughs> a big talent agency big called talent Johnny's. Agency. Good old mm. Johnny's. And Johnny's is a talent agency that was uh, incredibly powerful in Japan as recently as probably last year. And then mm. the BBC did a documentary on it um, exposing the founder of Johnny's, uh, Johnny Kitagawa, as someone, I mean, to say the word is instant demonetization, but it begins with a P, doesn't it, Pete? Well, it's ch it's, it's child abuse, isn't it? It's certainly, oh, it's um, it's certainly <laughs> sexual, it's sexually abuse. Yes. I mean, we, we it's literally a story about sexual abuse. We have to we can't get um, around use, the, use the vernacular uh, around it, whether whatever it does to our YouTube. And maybe it says something strange about YouTube that we're not allowed to use certain words uh, because, uh, I mean, it, it, it limits... Uh, as being able to talk about serious things uh, and yes. rather than, uh, I mean, and the people who wouldn't get demonetized are the sort of people who would, I don't know, run, a, run around a construction site with a spooky mask on running around. I mean, you're allowed <laughs> to do that. You're allowed to do that on the old streaming platforms. On kick you, you are. Yeah. But you can't talk about uh, really serious um, systemic uh, abuse from a huge uh, Japanese entertainment company. Would it be fair to say uh, that um, uh, Johnny's, uh, is it Johnny Kitagawa? Uh, yes. His name, yeah. Yes, yes, Johnny yes. Kitagawa's uh, Johnny and Associates, founded in 1975. Uh, they are, um, it's hard to sort of understate how important that talent agency was to the pop music of the 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, 10s, and now. I mean, they are ubiquitous uh, with uh, so many acts of, over the years. Mm, and, I mean, what's, what's annoying is back in, I think it was around 2000, uh, a newspaper or a magazine in Japan mm. ran a story on sort of, they interviewed a few people that had been abused by Johnny Kitagawa and yeah. it, this agency had a lot of young boys in boy bands and things and they lived in like a dorm in his house and he had yeah. sort of free reign there. Normal it's sort kind of, of stuff, isn't it, Chris? Normal yeah. stuff, you know. It's all a bit, it's all a bit bloody Jimmy Savile if you're, you know, mm. from the UK and know his story. It's very similar to that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so they ran an article on it um, but no mainstream media in Japan picked it up for the simple reason that when media threatened to talk about it, uh, or when media considered talking about it, Johnny's threatened to pull all their talent out of the TV shows and the magazines and the films yeah. and everything. And when they controlled, you know, a, a huge proportion, a, a staggering amount of the A-list talent in Japan, it gave them a lot of power. And um, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a real tragedy, unfortunately, that. Uh, Nobody stood up to him until mm. the BBC documentary came out. And of course, Johnny is, is himself dead now, passed away, uh, unfortunately. So he didn't get to face the, the brunt of this head on. Instead, his, uh, his niece, who I think is running the company, Julie Fujishima, is, uh, is running it in his stead and in his passing um, as president of the company. But just today, they announced that they want to change the name of the company. And finally, I think they're starting to sort of realize they've got to actually do something and start compensating the people involved uh, because they didn't do a very good job sort of doing much about this when it was all announced and when the media finally cottoned on. But the NHK, the BBC of Japan, have said they don't want to work with the company anymore or the talent involved. And a few other big players in Japan have sort of said, we're going to stay away from the company. And then today, I think they announced they're going to change the name of the company and split it into two parts, one that's going to focus on compensation and one that's going to focus on uh, the talent side of things, um, mm. which is, I think the company is called Smile Up. Smile yes, Up. Yes, Smile hyphen Up um, is going to be yes, the, what's a great uh, name. The, the Phoenix organization. Um, you know, it, it's... I think it's stark that um, it's taken an outside um, force uh, to, 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 you know, have this Jenga uh, tower kind of uh, topple um, after so many years. Um, and it's a story that's re been repeated time and time again um, in the in the music industry. I think it's fair to say when there's power imbalances where there's um, situations where, you know, fame is involved and, 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 and children and, and young young teens and, and, and people want... Um, what what their stars and 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 the people their fans of have, um, the, the people will take advantage. Uh, 
there's there's a, there's an argument to say that a lot of the music industry um, in K-pop and J-pop and all of the uh, spheres is exploitative at a base level anyway. Uh, but then obviously uh, Johnny Kitagawa um, uh, took advantage of his position at the top and and the the the, the, the love the um, children had on on on, on becoming stars. Uh, he, he took advantage of that, and it's been an astonishing uh, list of list of crimes. And and mm. we just know for a fact that for every um, person who may or may not be getting whatever scant um, consideration for for, for, for reparations, uh, one would one would su- suggest they're going to be given out. Um, there'll be multitudes of people who have who are unwilling to come forward to subject themselves to that because to admit that you have been abused is such a big, big uh, step, I think it's fair to say, um, that we'll probably never know the the, the the half of actually what went on in the dormitories mm. of, of, of Johnny Kitagawa's uh, employ. So it's uh, it's 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 a very uh, it's a horrific story um, with a horrific end. And you know, I mean, good good luck with the Phoenix organisation, lads. I mean, really, I mean, if you <laughs> we'll if you're up. if you're um, you know, we we sort of see these kind of empresarios being um, you know, pe- families will push their kids towards even tainted names in in the business. You've only got to look at. Um, R. Kelly being a very good example, um, you know, people yeah. would be willing to uh, to, to, to push uh, their children um, towards these uh, these figures because they hold so much power and they uh, they're they're, they're, yeah. they're locked yeah. to to so much wealth. So uh, uh, look, it, it, it's an astonishingly sad story, uh, but it is hard to understate how ubiquitous uh, Johnny like there's nothing like it really there's there's no one central figure or central agency that does the amount of heavy lifting um or, or have, have worked in as many um different spheres in 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 in, in western music it's there's just mm, nothing like it really no but like, i suppose the closest comparison is is combine Harvey Weinstein with Jimmy Savile and you, you get Johnny Kitagawa it's not a nice mm. equation to have um, no. But yeah, I mean, dozens of massive bands, you know, Smap, Arashi, Jump, all big part of uh, Johnny Kitagawa and Associates. Mm. Or Johnny, it's just called Jannies, Jannies in Japanese, Jannies. Um, but I, it, it's, it's, yeah, it was a BBC documentary that broke the story or sort of got this sort of ball rolling on this, which is, you know, it's kind of cool. There was a, it was a British outlet that sort of helped push mm. this and get it over the edge before Jap- like Jap- Japan's own media focused on it. Although I think it really helped that Johnny Kitagawa was already gone, and so they didn't yeah. have to worry about repercussions per se. Well, the and, new and, and also, well, what we heard about the new would, boss, though. The right. new boss. Mr. Higashiyama, the new boss, is himself facing questions about alleged sexual misconduct. His response to the allegations was, I don't remember clearly. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. I have trouble wow, remembering. Wow, that's, that's a good start, well, oh. isn't it? That's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God's well, sake. It, so then we'll split oh. Smile Up, or whatever it's called, um, into a new one, into a new two organisations. There'll be another one of that uh, recursively until there's no money left in the pot. But I mean, look, look, um, you've you've got to look to a character like there's a guy called Junior Hiramoto who is heading up a group of uh, men, uh, young 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 men who um, were abused um, by Johnny or, or under Johnny's uh, employ. And uh, I mean, such bravery uh, that these young men are showing hmm. because the, the the AP and the people who are reporting stuff there aren't identifying the people who have been uh, have been abused uh, but these guys uh, headed by junior um, is heading up a group of, uh, of Johnny's victims and hoping uh, against hope probably to get uh, a little bit of um, a little bit of solace with, with, a, with a bit of cash hopefully but um, it's it's a, it's a really sad situation and it, it's it's um, sad that this story that we've seen so many times in mm. entertainment in music in sport um, as, as, as it's happened again. And it's happened over such a long period of time. It just puts me off. Some, was somebody who once, you know, wanted uh, to get into the film industry in some capacity. It maybe still does in some way. You know, just hearing stories about all this sort of stuff, the show business, sort of the dark side of show business. There's just so many maniacal, egotistical mm. monsters, you know, who who are just put in positions of power and know how to pull the levers and take advantage of it. And, and, and work it just really the... puts you off it all. You know, when I think of film, I think creative individuals who want to create something amazing and share something. But then you learn about someone like Harvey Weinstein, who's, mm. you, you don't go, oh, he's a brilliant businessman. You go, he's, he's solely probably tried to get to that position of power so that he can do these awful, fucked up things. And it's just like, oh, fucking music and it... films. It's just so depressing that, People want to get into those positions, not out of creativity, but out of 
and it's, quest to uh, abuse and it's, people. It's kind it's of, and, and it's this kind of um, predatory behaviour that um, they almost play the system quite well. You know, it's the sort of thing that uh, in Japan, like the the idea of coming out and and the shame uh, um, that the, the, abu- the abused often feel about coming out and admitting that they've mm, um, mm. you know fallen fallen victim to, to to some of these crimes. It's really difficult, and you know it's hard enough over here. But good God, can you imagine doing that in Japanese society, admitting that I. Uh, was was abused. It's 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 yeah, really yeah. Um, it, you know that culture of shame really does go um, somewhere to help these um, perpetrators out. So look, um, we we go again. Oh, they, it, it's sad to say that we we it's happened again, uh, but we go again. And uh, I don't think anyone's going to be necessarily you know grieving his loss. Uh, Johnny not being with us right now. <laughs> no, definitely not. But uh, yeah, we'll be tracking. What goes on with Johnny Kitagao? I guess we won't Ooh. hear that name for much longer once it's turned to smile up or whatever the hell it's going to be called. And of course, it's unfortunate because there are a lot of talent, a lot of good people working under the company who are going to be uh, punished as a result of that. Both talent, I think a lot of talent working with Johnny and Associates are just not going to, their career is sort of done now mm. as a result of this probably. Um, so what, a, oh, oh, just annoying as hell. But enough of that. We'll be back in a moment, guys, with your stories, comments, and questions in the fax machine. Happier times. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Dawson? We've got a message from... Uh, hello, uh, Chris B. No, that was another one. <laughs> Wrong one. Oh, dear. Uh, dear Pineapple Pen Pete. I'm Pineapple Pen Pete this time. Uh, and uh, Alan Davies will play you in the movie, Chris. Alan Is that Davies. fair? Alan Davies has got very yeah. curly hair. Alan Davies, did he bite, did he bite a homeless dude. man? Did, did Alan Davies oh, bite a homeless man? I think Alan Davies. Might. Let me let oh me double God. check before anyone shouts at me. Alan Davies, homeless man. Bite. Most people don't know who Alan Davies mm. is. He's a guy yeah, on British matter, TV, yeah. and he did a show once. He apparently, bit a homeless man's ear in a drunken oh. attack in a scene you will not see on QI. Um, anyway, oh, deep <laughs> and Pete uh, and Christ. and Chris uh, in April 2024. Uh, we are going on a cruise around southern Japan. This is tea in Texas. And our stops include Nagasaki, Kagoshima, Kochi, uh, Kyoto, Nagoya, Shimizu, uh, Yokohama, and Busan in South Korea. I mean, that's not bad when it goes to, um, you know, the old uh, the old ports and stuff. Which of these locations will be best explored by bike? Which should we hike? And which uh, have rivers we should canoe or kayak? Our group is fit oh, and over 21. We'll have six to eight hours in each location. Keep on rocking. Tea in Texas. The thing is, with very specific questions like this, it's it's not that I interesting for the know. people who aren't doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't it's know. like it's like plan your itinerary. This is like this is like what a tour guide should be doing. Surely somebody on the boat will know of these uh, particular situations. Um, I wouldn't recommend be cutting it around the port of Busan on a kayak. Um, <laughs> it is a fairly busy shipping lane, but uh, you be you. Um, but, um, Kagoshima is very beautiful. I imagine there's a few inlets there you could explore by canoe, uh, and it's very still and very beautiful. So uh, yeah, uh, my my uh, my vote goes for um, Kagoshima and the Devil's Washboard. I think you should just kayak through Nagasaki, not in the sea, but just down the street. Down the street, just get a wheels, kayak yeah. and just sit in the middle of the road and just go for it, <laughs> see what happens. Uh, if you want to hike, Nagasaki is very like hilly and mountainous, so yeah, don't do get that. hiking there. Mm. Have some have some dumplings, famous mm. dumplings, and um, yeah, that's a very specific question though. It is I a mean, very specific question, but it's don't know, just, just have a bloody fine. good time though. Get a bike, yeah. grab a bike, go around the mall on bike. If you only got six to eight hours, you got to speed run every single place, right? Yeah, uh, but trying to eat a different dish in each one of those places. That's my only advice. That's what <laughs> I do. Eat all the <laughs> food. <laughs> He's all food. It makes his floor uh, better. I would say that um, the Kano River in Shimizu Town looks very beautiful. Uh, I've been past it, but uh, yeah, that's the limitations. Where is Shimizu? Where the dick- Dickens uh, is that? It is in Shizuoka. Uh, Shimizu. Mm. Oh, one of the few places I've not been, along with Nikko. We got a question from Rich. Players, isn't it? Yeah. It is, no, yeah. One of, the bit, one of the two. Of, I need to get them off my list once and for yeah. all in the next few weeks. Uh, Rich from Jersey says, hey guys, hope you're doing well. Listen to the podcast while I work in my blacksmith shop. That's Ooh. cool. Uh, anyway, I'll be back in Japan for my third trip this November. Chris, I've been inspired by your video with American Pete, not the British one, and I'm going to surprise my buddy with a walk across Tokyo. My questions yeah. are, is the route as easy as following the train? And uh, number two, is that giant fried chicken place still there? If so, where do I go to get it? 
All the best guys, Rich from Jersey. The Ooh. big fried chicken place, I imagine it's still there because it was the most popular tourist thing in all of, uh, where was it? Uh, Akasaka? No, sorry, mm. Asakusa. Right. We got the Sensorji Temple, a bastion of cultural heritage, and nobody goes. People want to get the chicken, the big fried chicken nearby at the stool. Go and eat that. From Taiwan, no less. It's not even Japanese, <laughs> but it's good chicken. Uh, nice. It... it Take, walking across Tokyo is not easy. The only reason I could do it is because I knew the, the whole city well. Because the, the, the train line we followed is actually underground. It's the Ginza line. Oh. Uh, and uh, surprise, surprise, you don't get a visual on the underground train. Right. But generally, let's use Google Maps. Google Maps, you'll be fine. From <laughs> uh, Asakusa to Tokyo Station, easy peasy. Or even Shinbashi. It's from Shinbashi to Rapongi. The things get a bit more complicated, shall we say. Uh, and so just, yeah, whip out the map for that. But I don't know. Just, why don't you just point yourself in a direction, just walk that way and see where the day takes you. That's my advice. Mm. Uh, we've got one last one here from Raphael. It says, Dear Carnal Chris and Peeping Pete, my wife and I just got married at the end of July. Congratulations. Uh, as we met each other through Kendo, there was never a question where we would go for our honeymoon. <laughs> the land of Kendo. While I've never been to Japan before, my wife has been there several times. So we planned our itinerary for our Japan November trip. We negotiated that we would visit the most common tourist places uh, during our travels. We'll also, also spend one night in Kyushu's Venice of Yanagawa, Famous for its eels. My question is, what would you guys do as a birthday surprise for your one night stay in Yanagawa? How would you surprise a woman who already knows much of Japan, uh, like uh, much more of Japan than you? Um, I can't think of anything. I need your help. All the best. Raphael from Switzerland. Um, Yanagawa. I went there. I filmed a video. It wasn't very good. And I canned it. Uh, well, it's a nice place. And the eels yeah. are very good. Yeah. <laughs> the eels are very good. I don't, you know eels. what? I think eels are very underrated as a food. Um, I think in Chinese and Japanese cuisine, they are cooked beautifully. Uh, in Cockney, <laughs> jellied eels, they're disgusting. What are you doing? Absolutely they're gross. But they're just, they're just fishy little eels, aren't they? Eels. Yeah, yeah. Unagi, mm. amazing. Yanagawa is mm. great. Yanagawa, it's got like a canal, and they like to call it the Venice of Japan. It's not. The real Venice of Japan is called Kudashki, and it's much better. Right. Go there for your honeymoon. But uh, <laughs> we, we tried to get on a canoe or a boat, canal boat, and they were like, no. Mm. And then I lied and said I was from the BBC. And they were like, yeah, come on. So sometimes you have to tell a sometimes few people. Sometimes the BBC do terrible tell. luck. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, um, did you know, I didn't know this, but um, um, Venezuela is Venice. That's it. <laughs> it's Venice. It's based on what Venice. What is this going? It's based on Venice. Uh, like we thought, oh, Venice, like, what? Well, really? Venezuela, yeah, Venice, Venezuela. 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 Like, yeah. 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 There you go. All the knowledge. All the I knowledge right. on the Venezuela, Abroad Japan Let podcast. me just double check that. Venezuela. Uh, um, but mm, my birthday yes. surprise for Yanagawa, go down the canal boat, propose again, get remarried on mm. the canal boat, lie that you're you know, working for the BBC if you have to, to get on that canal boat. Stop mm. at nothing, Raphael. But have yeah. a lovely time with Yanagawa by all accounts. Got, got another one for you. Got another one for oh, you. Oh, God. Oh, more <laughs> fucking canary, knowledge with Pete. The Canary Isles. Are based canary on the Canary, Is it canary the bird? Isles or the Canary Islands. Is it Canary Islands Canary or Canary Islands. Isles? Canary, canary Islands. Um, it's dog, dog island, canine, can, can not uh, not the bird, it's dog, canine, named after Very the dog. Good. Should I say Very dog anymore? Indeed. Dog, canine. This, this conversation's over right we're now. Keep the, the stories, the questions. Show. So many knowledge it's bombs. The guys. fun's over. Keep the stories, questions, oh. comments coming into a broad Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back later in the week, guys, <laughs> to do it all over again. But for now, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the podcast that dispenses <laughs> knowledge you'll never need nor want to learn. Oh, my Lord. Have a good few days, guys. See you soon.